out of here. Before we um, we'll look at some SCSI mass storage device emulators. Those ones that you can plug in a uh, flash memory card. Well, let's get into it. So I'll be putting the links um, to the pages that I discuss in the comments. But anyway, let's start with um, and we'll use this as a kind of a base reference because it pretty much covers all the functionality that's also in the other. Uh, you have something called Zulu SCSI um, card. And this is an implementation where you have the internal 50 pin um, SCSI connector with an option to have the 25 pin um, so called external or standardized SCSI connector also as uh, so that you can add that. And, in the, and there are like different uh, like builds of this card. So you see the card has a few missing components like uh, the option to have internal um, like a floppy disk power connector and then some other components. So you did the you, you can actually buy this pre-configured so it's the same base card, but then the base th th then you can buy it configured for various use. Like in this case, this would be internal use with um, USB power uh, and no um, external connector. Um, you know, just as a point, you usually you, know, you don't have it. you can't have both active um, at the same time. <laughs> at least the, the way I think. But anyway, so what's common with these um, these uh, SCSI emulator cards it's, is that you have um, a connector for either the internal SCSI 50 pin um, cable or the um, external connector. And you, you have a slot for a um, SD card in various form factors I've seen being used. Um, also, you have this option for either external power based on a floppy disk um, power connector or um, just a standard USB. And uh, when it comes to configuring the operation of the card, then either it um, comes through the actual SD card as a configuration, or you actually then have some physical um, uh, dip switches or rotary switches or other mechanisms, physical mechanisms for configuring. And um, usually the um, uh, configurations, they, they're to, um, in certain cards, you can actually define a device number on the SCSI um, bus. And then, uh, very important to SCSI is the concept of termination. So when you, you chain um, several devices, then the last device has to have a, a, a um, termination. And then they talk about the termination being either active or passive. Um, and um, in, in, in those cases, we <coughs> have a chain of devices and, and, and um, we actually have some, an active termination. And, and this emulation card would be used in such a context to replace one of the devices. Then I don't suggest that one relies on the fact that the um, card itself can be powered through the um, power going to the termination because then. I just don't like that idea, even if even if it's uh, supported by many of these cards. That the actual um, yeah, the, the power for the termination is um, could be used also to power the card. And interesting enough, most of the solution, not all the solutions, but most of the solutions are actually based on um, using the Raspberry Pi 2000 series. Um, system on the chip solution so that's here that's why you see the Raspberry Pi <laughs> so basically they're running um, now the same process and then of course they can reuse all the code and everything so that's that's why you um, most of the other circuitry is, is um, bus buffering and then for um, card stabilization um, so, when you're selecting one of these cards, then you need to like understand what are you replacing. So, uh, is it a SCSI one, 
standard um, device or SCSI 2. I mean, since the generation stuff that I work with, and mostly it's um, SCSI 1 generation um, stuff. And also, you need to think that what are you trying to emulate? Are you trying to emulate um, like uh, hard disk drives or in CD, uh, CD station? So, in um, many of the cases, they you know, these cards support the concept of putting files on the SD card, and then a file can represent either a hard drive or an SD or, or a CD-ROM or even some other types of devices. Um, and as I said, in this comment, like this, are similar too. And, and, a, and a lot of this, so when I'm going through these specifications on, on the Zulu um, uh, SCSI implementation, then basically you will find the same features in the other cards. And, and where it varies is form factors and, and, and feature, maybe less features or more features. And, uh, but we'll go, we'll go through them just as to, to have them as a reference point. Uh, most of these cards are based on open source, so the um, source code is available. Um, and then um, some of these cards have limitations on to how many SCSI devices can one card emulate. And um, uh, as I said here, it was including CD-ROM, magneto, optical, um, so you can emulate a, a tape drive. You know, certain removable unit also can emulate certain removable things. Some of these cards actually have a, a jumper where you can you can um, actually add on uh, an eject button and stuff like that. Uh, and then here we discussed already the SCSI one, SCSI two, all support. And then there's a lot of talk about how fast these are. I mean, basically for the generation of stuff, the retro stuff that I deal with. That's really it's talking about these peak speeds is meaningless because the actual device reading can't handle it. Uh, then the SCSI termination which I already brought up um, uh, before. So in, in this specific implementation it's a dip switch that controls if it's a terminating unit or not. And then some other implementations that you put a, you configure it in a config file and then you put it on the SD card. And then um, you can upgrade the firmware just by putting the file on the SD card, which is good. And as it says, uh, highly configurable using a text-based any file. So there is a, and other cards have the same concept where you, you have that initialization file on the file system on the SD card. And then they, some some of these devices have this that you can have an activity led. Because you can actually define this to the car to emulate only a single device, so you can have it. I'll, I'll make it uh, emulate my hard disk drive, a hard disk drive, and then of course it makes sense to have these activity led stuff. And this is uh, a bit. I'm a bit skeptical about this um, designed to be powered via SCSI termination power when provided by the whole ad. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, in some implementations of termination uh, power, they have current restrictions on how much you can draw on that. So uh, I don't. Think. And then, as I said, the, I already show in the picture the optional 25-pin header for direct. Um, so you can put a connector to um, connect in um, external SCSI, um, or to connect it into as an external SCSI device. And then the 50-pin for the internal. And then there, when, when we're talking about mounting this, I mean, this is just the card, but um, it, depending on the product implementation, you can, you can also find um, that people have made that, ah, you can buy a bracket to fit on a specific card or mount it internally in a certain place. Or, so, so in some instances, there's kind of a lot of options. And there's the bus transfers, uh, transceivers, which is the um, buffering. So probably doesn't matter, I think probably all of them work. Um, and then it's a little bit about firmware, you know, the, the, 
each of these has its own pedigree like where did it come where where does the logic come from so in certain circumstances i would think that it's important to know where the, what the pedigree is depending on what type of retro equipment you have so you might have a there, there are people that have experience that certain command implementations that come through a certain pedigree don't work better than other implementations of one. This is actually good information to have. And then of course they're trying to push their own solution, so why, why is this better than <laughs> other solutions? But uh, yeah. <coughs> we can debate some of those facts. But. And then um, even, even if you talk about software, but also from a hardware perspective, then um, you know that they they derive from each other. So all of these these implementations look uh, look and feel is the same. So as I said, it starts with the card. Um, is it for internal use, external use, or you you can even find cards which are very sparsely populated. And the idea is that you as the end user, when you get it, you populate it um, according to what usage scenario you have. Uh, yeah, and then the uh, and the same applies to the power solution. Is it uh, USB external or or powered through uh, with the termination? So let's move on and have a look at uh, another solution. So just a little bit, a um, bit of a side comment here before we move on. I'm I'm not specifically pushing this side. You can buy these from lots of different places, but I thought this was a very good example of a. Of, of when you go to um, purchase one of these that will put your face with. Um, one of the aspects is that you need to, ah, it's is the versioning. Um, you can find, like Zulu, Eskasi and, and others, you, you, you can find that there are very many different versions of these being sold. So there are specific hardware uh, software configurations and um, each of them have a like a main version, and, and this main version mainly indicates the combination of specific hardware and or board layout and implementation, and then the software. Um, and in many cases, uh, in addition, so the version defines what the board looks like. So in, in this case, you see this looks uh, looks a bit different. Uh, okay, so this seems to have a different. Um, system on the chip solution being used and it's got more, more dips and the physical button and so it, in, to a certain extent that you, know, you need to make your own decision of what type of board would you like to have would you like to have more more with physical controls and that in um, for example this uh, Zulu SCSI 1.2 it's it's actually quite interesting if you if you're going to do a single device replacement uh, there's more <laughs> that's physically controlled so that might actually be of interest but anyway moving on um, in some cases when you're buying you can actually get the so have the option to select the um, cable to be with it uh, you can also very common that you get to select what type of SD card or what the size is uh, and usually they they say oh, ah you can have a generic uh, um, well not in this case it's Sandus but in in some sites they say you can have a generic uh, SD card of a non-brand SD card or you can have so-called you know branded SD card so that's that's very common so then the non-branded is usually cheaper not necessarily that crappier but um, cheaper and then as I mentioned with mounting brackets then you have different types of options to uh, uh, to mount it in different scenarios so let's have a little look at um, SCSI 2 SD and um, as I said when it comes to versioning it can get a bit confusing so for example here's a um, uh, Zulu uh, or the um, SCSI 2 SD version 6 implementation and, um, and at the date of making the video it's actually not that easy to find this cell. Um, it's a, this specific 6.4 <laughs> version. <laughs> and um, 
as we see, the feature set is pretty much pretty complete in this one. You have um, ah, complete, complete. But it has an internal. This is more like pure. So you have an internal connector. You have the floppy power. You have the SD card slot. You still have the option for SD power. There's no option to add in uh, to ha have this as an external device. And then it's um, kind of based on two different controller cards uh, chips. Uh, also, they, this is um, interesting. Then you can see that they have a 5.2 version here. And then they have a boxed uh, version, which is, as you see, with the external connector. So, um, yeah. And then they call this one the full size implementation. And if you look through the specifications and features that it's um, yeah, pretty much the same. But it's it's one of the um, other uh, main names that you can find out there. So if you search for this, then uh, also one option. So, and then I also found this um, article very useful, so I'll put, as I said, links in the description. Because this describes this card here, which is not... And the interesting is that this is um, SCSI to SD, and then it's, when you go to the SCSI to SD main site, then this isn't even listed. So this is yet another implementation of, uh, of the emulator, and, and this one is more, uh, yeah, more compact. So and interesting enough, it has the, a different power connector, so ATX power connector, then it has the 50 pin ribbon connector, and then it has some um, passive um, termination uh, also implemented, and then the SD slot is this one, but, but really a very, very compact solution. So I, I suggest you to check this out if you're interested in this form factor. So, and the last kind of I don't, I don't know, want to call these main brands, but I mean, sort of when it's sort of like open source hardware, software, and companies, so it's um, a blending of all different concepts of some of them are commercial entities, and uh, some of them are just uh, based on, um, you know, somebody makes a whole pile of boards, and then there's lots of different people that take them and put them together in different configurations. <laughs> um, yeah, so Blue Scassi, um, uh, they're very much emphasizing like where can you, like different sellers where you can get it from. Uh, authorized eBay and Yahoo auction sellers. And, um, here we can see, and, and this is a, with Blue Scassi, it's also like um, many different variants. You can go with everything from a empty board to a partially configured board to yeah and then uh, also when it comes to um like what um proce uh, processor processor that you in this case the blue scassi you can actually plug in a, um, a st standard blue pill um, microcontroller and that's the brains but let's take a little look at um some information that um, is very good on this site. <laughs> anyway, so you, before you click away from the site in frustration that it actually doesn't contain any useful information other than they're trying to push their brand. Um, they actually do have a good, uh, and, and as I said, links in the description, but they have um, links to their dis um, documentation and here they have some very nice pictures. And um, here's yet again an, uh, another variant of the um, card where they actually use a Raspberry Pi Pico um, uh, unit as a uh, as the um, processor for um, for the solution. So that's actually so the blue pill is a little bit more blue scassi is a bit interesting where it uses microcontrollers as the basis for driving it. Yeah. And then they also like they here they indicate they have a, a purely external unit and an internal unit. And the external unit, and this is the case with many implementations. If you start searching, then you will come up with these. That there are many people that ah, 
there are certain sources where you actually can buy the external unit already prepackaged in a, in a nice box and, and, and with a power solution and, uh, and everything. And here you can have, so as I said, the very nice um, uh, picture. So this is the, I think, the microcontroller version for the blue pill thing. Uh, and here you have the uh, Pico, and this is an internal implementation. <sighs> And there's a special form factors, like for PowerBook, yeah, external DB2 and desktop. And they also, they, you can either buy it as a kit from certain sellers or pre-assembled, so that here you can actually have a nice visual of, of what it looks like. So usually when you buy a kit, then they, uh, because of manufacturing um, uh, logistics and costs, the when you actually buy a circuit board, uh, it's quite easy uh, and not that super much more expensive to have the SMDs already installed on the board from the board manufacturer, which is an interesting trend. So, um, and this makes actually making electronics with boards with SMDs not that unrealistic for even for a hobbyist like myself who hasn't really got all the equipment and everything. But I, I could actually design this board. And then I can get the the actual board manufacturer to um, buy the um, SM the, sim the simple SMDs, passive components, and capacitors and resistors and stuff, and have them already pre-assemble the board, uh, so that I would get it like this. And then the only things I would need to add is the like connectors and blah blah, blah. So, uh, more larger components. And then, as I said, it supports in this case Raspberry Pi code. It has very good assembly instructions here. It shows you how, it, how it's put together and different assembly options. And so as I said before, you click away from the site. And it's not the documentation part is actually... You know, it's, it's very useful and it gives a, a better insight into what are we talking about when we're talking about these different uh, form factors and stuff. So, anyway... So that uh, that I I've, I've been doing lots of research as though went on the, on the internet and it's the this is kind of a compilation of what are the kind of, yeah main brands that are flying around there and then um, I've been more focused on the 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 card level and um, when you go out and search then you're going to find that there are quite a few where there are pre-packaged solutions already in, uh, like for external solutions in the box and then there are implementations that are uh, like I'm more interested in uh, 80s style uh, uh, storage emulation for CD-ROM drive uh, possibly ex um, you know, tape drive hard drive but there are implementations that are <coughs> seem to be more specific to musical um, equipment <coughs> sorry where Certain synthesizers and other stuff have been using historically SCSI um, storage units with with actual data on the on the drive that's specific to the synthesizer, as far as I can understand. So you can actually buy solutions where they actually have it already pre-configured for a certain type of um, synthesizer or, or musical or electronic musical equipment. So. I'm not into that, so I can't really give any details more than that. But it was interesting that. So if you wonder why does it say something about a specific uh, uh, synthesizer uh, hardware, then then it's because of that. So it's, it's not only the the card; it's the card and the SD combo, and then the SD card has. Usually, they comment about that it has certain data on it related to that synthesizer. So, my task now is to think which one of these, or a combination of these units, because what I want to do is I want to set up, I, I think I want to have a standalone internal solution that will simulate, uh, emulate only a um, hard drive. And um, then I want to have, I think probably one one unit external that would be then the emulator for a CD-ROM um, tape drive, possibly an extra hard drive. As you say, the a lot of the many of these cards they you can put like you can put seven virtualized 
um, SCSI devices on the same unit. So you, you could actually have um, an external uh, plug-in box that would uh, emulate a CD-ROM drive or tape drive. And the thing is to have it external, then you can actually swap out the SD card really easy. So, um, and then if it's a uh, if it's like tape drive, zip drive emulation and stuff, then the retro computer will uh, understand that it's a, it's a swap out media, so it won't get confused. Or a CD drive. So, let's see what I come up with. Um, so, if you're interested in that, um, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon for notifications, and um, let's see if we can get one of these solutions to actually work. See you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.